all right guys welcome back to the channel um, been a while since I posted a video um, this is a little review that I wanted to do for a while and uh, wanted to show you what it's like to hunt and film out of a tree stand versus a tree saddle so I know there's plenty of videos on YouTube talking about this and that on which is better um, just gonna show you what works best for me and um, what I've done over the years in in hunting so on this setup here this is the lone wolf custom gear 0.5 tree stand i've got the um the pocket uh what do you call this the i'm sorry this is the seat pouch from lone wolf um goes on the bottom of your seat you can put it on your waist so what i do i carry it on my waist as i'm walking in and then I hang my cam arm which is mounted on the bottom of my seat I get it off and set it on the tree and then I uh, hang my pouch on the on the seat like this it's got two plastic hooks and they just hook right onto the seat and then as I set the seat up like that the thing sits against the tree I bring it down and I've got everything right here I've got my phone in here right now I've got my gear um, hanger so I like to hang my bow up and I keep my kill deer uh, leg straps in the front pouch here as well so it's easy access and then I've also been carrying my rope inside of here and I'll, I usually keep a lineman's rope and a tether on my setup and so this is what I've went to for a tree stand harness this year is I've went to the kill deer from Dryad and I got the thing off Facebook or uh, one of the saddle pages or mobile hunting gear and it's a very compact harness it's a waist harness um, and you can combine it with their saddle but I'm just using it for my tree stand um, sort of a hybrid harness and on my saddle setup I'm using the tethered platform the standard size and then I'm using the cruiser XC and I think it's a large and uh, I'm using a Kong duck on my 8mm rope. I can't stress how nice it is to have some type of a mechanical aider, um, or not aider, but a uh, Prusik um, on your rope. It just makes it so much nicer for climbing. I keep one on my Lyman's rope at all times when I'm climbing. It just simplifies. You don't have to try to mess with the Prusik knot or anything like that. And then also I like one especially for the saddle for when I'm using it on my tether for the simple reason when I'm in the tree and I'm using a Prusik knot it makes it sit that much further off the tree and I like to stay fairly tight to the tree and for filming I'm using the lone wolf pocket arm and I absolutely love this arm it's very compact light it does have a little bit of bounce with my XA20 but I'll give a little bit of the footage for the packability and the, the lightness of this arm and this is I'm not sure what the fluid head is I forgot that's a small rig I'm not sure what the model is um, but love this thing and then I've got the VZ rock remote for my camera and then I usually have the GoPro Hero 11 on my head or I have it mounted off on the side but I like to have it on my head because sometimes I'll have a situation where I can't quite film a shot with the big camera and I can still get a shot on film but I try to get as best footage I can with the big camera. Alright guys, so this here is my saddle setup. So when I'm in the tree, I usually have the thing at about, right about waist, I mean chest high to my chin height. And I like to go and have my cam arm, you know, just above my knees. And it helps where I can film around here like this here and come around the tree. And I use, this is what I like about it, having a three-arm camera arm for a saddle. It's trying to pivot be, be, with your camera between you and the tree and get that shot on film. What I've run into with the saddle a lot of times is um, they say you can shoot 365 degrees around the tree. I can. But when you put a camera in the middle of it, it makes it a lot more difficult to get that shot on film and have the ability to get around the tree to shoot. So that's obviously the hardest shot right there. It's a weak side shot, but, or more to the right, but I can get around the tree this way and shoot. The problem I have, if I'm using a camera and I get around the tree like this here, 
I don't want the camera right here because I can get tight to the tree. So I have to have the camera over here and you can turn your arm and have the camera right here but you're going here and you're looking at your shot going here and going looking at your shot. The problem I had when I was in Iowa deer hunting I messed up and I had to let the camera get in the way of me and the deer. And so I got the deer going right through my opening at 10 yards and he was a giant buck. I'm not sure I can't remember if he was a 10 or an 8 point but he was he was a really good deer. A deer I've been very happy with with a trad bow especially any kind of bow or rifle. He was just a giant. So I have my camera right here on this side and I was filming this deer it was getting low light and I had my bow right here ready to shoot and I was probably in this position somewhat like this the deer's right down here at like 10 yards. I had three bucks come in this buck comes in and there was another buck a smaller buck that was coming in this way and they were fixing the lock horns well this deer figured out he didn't want to mess with them so he goes this way the bigger deer comes from further out sees the other deer coming from the creek and they um, start to get the uh, get ready to lock up on horns and this deer goes away and he comes right through my opening at like 10 yards while well, I'm looking at my camera like this here trying to make sure I get it on film plus worrying about a deer seeing me because I'm swinging around here on this tree he comes through my opening and I'm over here like this well then I got to come around my saddle and I got to go and reach for my bow and start pulling back I got the half draw before he got through my opening and quick as it happened I wasn't able to bleep to stop him because it had been too late anyway so just a simple thing like that to where if you have a deer right here and you're trying to film and shoot you have a harder time getting that shot right here because you go like this here then you're wide open to the sky so you don't want to expose yourself so it's best to kind of stay close to the tree like this here and film as you're fixing to make this shot especially if they're close with a compound if you're shooting 30 yards you're not going to have that much of an issue but you're shooting a trad bow you're trying to keep it within 20 but 20 yards from you so, this is why I've kind of transitioned myself over to a tree stand. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the saddle. I love a saddle. It's, it's comfortable. Lightweight is a big thing and compact. And I can carry everything in a backpack and it's good to go. Alright guys, so here's my uh, Lone Wolf .5 tree stand setup. So, <clears throat> right now I've got my camera arm, you know, just, just above waist. And... It feels like it might be just a touch higher than what I normally keep it. I usually keep it just a little bit lower because my camera is going to sit, you know, this much higher than what the camera arm is. So with the tree stand, what I like for filming, I can film all the way around me like this here and I can sit still. I'm tight against the tree. And if I want to make a shot, you know, I stand up. Obviously, I have my bow on the left side being at the tree stand. My bow is usually on my right on the saddle right here like this here. I'm facing the tree so when I'm filming you know I've got nothing I can stay tight to the tree as I want to but I've got nothing in my way here from making a shot I can spin around the tree I can film over here and shoot now I keep this thing a little higher than what most guys do this is why so when I bring my camera back here to go around the tree if I want to shoot this weak side over here I can still get underneath the can underneath my rope right here so I can film all this around the tree and I can spin and make my shot right there if I need to loosen up, just loosen up a little bit. And then with this, with this saddle, uh, hybrid saddle setup, if I need to make a shot over here, which is not so often because I'm planning on making my shots over here, but you never know, dear, I can put my camera arm over here and then I can lean out and make that shot to a certain point. Obviously with a long bow, you're kind of got to watch your limb right here. But this is kind of why I have switched to the tree stand this year and I'm going to give it a shot. Not saying I'm going to stay with it. I always like switching things up. So I may, you may see me hunting out of the saddle a little bit this year as well. But majority of this season will be hunted out of this .5 tree stand. And I think it's going to work great for me. Nice thing about this thing, it's uh, also a meat hauler, <clears throat> so I'll keep an extra uh, tree stand strap on me, and if I'm packing out a deer, I strap the thing down. Um, I'll have meat bags inside this waste pack here, 
and uh, yeah, I'll be good to go. So um, another great tip, and I'll show you here in just a second, is when I go and put a tether onto a tree, there's a little trick that makes it so much easier um, that you don't have to worry about your tether falling down the tree. So when you put your um, when you put your strap around the tree, you go through it twice. It locks it in like a prusik. That thing is not going down at all. You can't push it down. It's just not going to go. It just rolls over itself. But just a little tech tip when you're setting up your tether, <clears throat> go through it twice. All right, so this is uh, what I was showing you. It's when you go, you've got your tether going around the tree. You come through your tether. There's one time. And just go underneath. So you can see this right here. Hope my camera's not too high. So you came through the tether, go underneath, and come right back through again. So you're making two passes through the loop of your tether. What that does, it locks it right in place. It's not going anywhere. So you can't push it down. I've had instances, not so much on a tree that's got you know, pretty coarse bark here as this, but you're in a slicker tree like a beech tree, sycamore tree. If you um, relax on your tether, like you kind of stand up on your platform, I have had these things slide down the tree. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry it uh, messed up a few times on, on a few things there, what I was trying to explain, but uh, I hope you were able to get what I meant out of it on the video. Um, if you like it and you want to see more of these videos like this here, uh, just give it a, leave me a comment and tell me uh, kind of what you'd like to see next. I plan on doing uh, a few more reviews on some gear. Uh, I'm not getting paid or sponsored by any of these uh, companies that I'm using. Uh, this is just what I use, what I like to use. I'm not a big fan of sponsorships. I just like to use what I want to use and if someone down the road wants to sponsor me and it's something I actually like to use, that's fine. But I like to be able to use whatever I want to use, so I'm not really brand loyal. I've got tethered platform, I've got an XC saddle, I've got a normal custom gear step. Last year I used a tethered 1.6 and I liked them, but I like on a hard bark tree like this here, it would tend to make noise. So that's why I'm using the normal custom steps. But I'll go over a few more things later on this uh, in these videos. We're about a month away from deer season here in Kentucky. So hope you all have a great season and good luck.